Alright then my friends, so we're now successfully outputting the correct data from Firestore right here. Now what I'd like to do is hook it up so that when you click on one of these, it takes you to the project details page for that project and shows the content of that project. So how are we going to do that? Well, these things right here, these are output inside the project list component. So let's head on over to that first of all. I've already opened it and this is where we output the project summary for each project. Now this thing here, when a user clicks on one of these project summaries, which is one of these things, then I want that user to go to the project details page. So we need to surround this in a link tag. So first of all, let's import that link tag. So import link from React Router DOM. And then we can surround this thing with a link tag right here. All right, so let's copy the closing tag and put it at the end. Okay, so now we need to link this to somewhere. And where's it going to link to? Well, if we go back to the app.js where we set up our routes, we can see that when we want to see a project details page, we go to forward slash project and then forward slash the ID of that project that we want to view. So we're going to link to forward slash project like so, and then forward slash, and then we need the ID. So let's concatenate that on outside the string, concatenate project dot ID. So remember, we have access to the project and on that we have a unique ID and that ID is going to be this thing right here. You see this? That we can get via project.id. So let us now view this in a browser. I'm going to save that and if we go over to the app and if we click on one of these, then we can see that ID right here. Okay, so the content is still dummy content. We're just outputting some lorem ipsum, but we now have the ID that we need. So now let's go over to the project details component so we can figure out how to actually display this document over here. So in project details, this is where we need to do that. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually connect this to Firebase, but we also want to connect it to our Redux state as well. So we need those two higher order components like we did in the last video. We need connect and also Firestore connect, and we need to compose those things together. So I'm going to import all of those things right now. So first of all, import connect. This will connect our component to the Redux state. This is from react-redux. The next thing I want to import is going to be Firestore Connect and this is going to be from React Redux Firebase and then finally let's import Compose because we need to compose those two together and that is from the Redux library. Okay, so let's sort this out down here. First of all, we need to compose some stuff together then we need to surround our project details. Okay, so the different higher order components that we want to compose together are going to be connect and Firestore connect. So first of all, let's do connect. We'll say connect. And this is going to take in the map state to props function. Now we don't have that defined yet, so let's do it. We'll say const map state to props, which is equal to an arrow function, we take in the state inside this and then inside the function we can return an object. Remember this object represents what we want to attach to our props. We'll fill this in shortly. So we've done our connect hierarchy component. The next one we need to do is the Firestore connect. So underneath that we'll do Firestore connect and inside here we pass an array of objects. We just want one object and that is going to be the collection projects because we're still listening to the projects collection right here. We're still after a project, remember, a single project. So then, now let's sort this thing out because now the project is being synced with our state and we have access to that projects collection now on the state via the Firestore object, much like we saw in the last tutorial. So now in here, we want to get that single individual project from the projects collection. So how are we going to do that? Well, remember, we can get the ID of the project that we want like this, props.match.params.id. That's from the router information. So let's also do that down inside this function. So we want to say const ID is equal to 
props.match.params.id, but we have a problem here. We don't get access to props automatically inside this map state to props, but we do pass it in as a second parameter. I'm going to call it own props and we can use own props there. So this is the props of the component, right? Before we attach anything else to it. So we're saying, okay, we'll get the props dot match dot params dot id so that's getting us the wrap parameter id now so we have that so then what we can say is const projects is equal to the state dot firestore it's on that firestore object remember dot data we have that data property and then dot projects so just to show you that we have this what i'm going to do is console dot log the state to show you where I got this from. So save that and let's view this in a browser and I'll go to the console and we can see down here, we have the Firestore, then we have the data, then we have the projects, okay? So I said state.firestore.data.projects, that gets us the projects. So this data right here, okay? Now we want the individual project. So let's say const project is then equal to projects question mark so we're doing a ternary operator here we're making sure that we actually have projects and if that's true then we want projects and then in square brackets the id so this project right here this thing is an object right and it contains these different properties and the property names is the id so we're saying okay find me the project on the project object with that id and we're putting it inside this constant now, okay? So now we're returning over here a project property on the props, and that's gonna be equal to the project that we just grabbed right here. Does that make sense? Cool, now we need a value for if this is not true, if we don't have any projects, and that will be null, okay? So only return this if we actually have some projects in the collection. Okay, so let's now try logging out the props over here. So I'm gonna get rid of this stuff so we don't log out the state. And this time I'm gonna console.log props and save that. So if we save it and view it in a browser, then we should see the props over here. And now we have, if we go down a single project and we can see the author first name, the author ID, the last name, the content, the created at, etc. So now what we can do is output this data inside this component over here. So let's do that. Instead of this, let's output the project ID. So let's first of all use a bit of destructuring. I'm going to get rid of these and I'm going to say const project is equal to props. So I'm just getting the project property from the props, right? And we're storing it inside that variable now, that constant. Then I want to check if we actually have a project. If we don't have a valid project, we don't want to output the, the project details. So I'm going to say if project and then open up these curly braces. Now this is where we want to return some JSX if we have that project. So I'm going to grab all of this thing right here and I'm going to paste it inside here. So let's just make that a bit neater. I think that's right. Okay. So now we're outputting this if we have a project and what we can do is output the project title. So let me I'll put that there, project.title, and that will output the title. Then we want the content instead of all this stuff over here. So let's get rid of that and output the project.content, like so. And then we can also output the first and last name. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to say project.author first name. And then I'm going to also output project dot author last name like so so we're outputting both of those there we'll keep the date as is for now we'll come back to this later when we want to format it correctly but for now let's use that template for if we have a project now the else case if we don't have a project we also want to return something so let's take this return statement pop it in there and then in here we'll say a div and we'll say container and this will also be center to centrally align the text. And then inside, we'll just do a P tag, which says loading project. So this will appear when project does not exist yet. Okay, because it might take some time to actually sync that data. So 
when it doesn't exist, it's going to show this. When it does exist, it's going to update and it's going to show this stuff. All right. So let's save that and view this in a browser and take a look and you see we get an error. <laughs> OK, so let's have a look what that is. And that is stupidly because probably, yep, yeah, we did not return this JSX over here. We need to return this. We can't just put it inside an if statement. We need to return it. So let's scoot that in now and that should now work. So fingers crossed, let's view this in a browser. And now we can see this thing right here. But if we refresh, then we should see loading project quickly because we didn't have a project then. But then when it gets it, we see it in the browser. Awesome. So that is now working.